Hiya folks, here's another one for you. This one's gonna be a little bit controversial, baby, isn't it? Oh, I hate that word. Why? I just, needles me, I hear it a lot. That's lately. controversial in itself. Anyway, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a few things here. We got one, two, three, four different things that you probably wouldn't thought would, would be air fryable, baby, is yeah. that a word? Let's have a look first of all what we've got. We've got the pork pie, we've got an avocado, we've got a tin of Spam, and we've also got a tin of peeled boiled potatoes in water. Right, a few of you have asked for these ones, believe it or not, so we're gonna give it a go. Now, with regard to the pork pie, baby, we know that we've always had pork pie cold. You slice it up, you have it with a ploughman's, a bit of what? English mustard! Mm. But we've had other people, especially from the Midlands or probably up further up north, where they say that the only way to have a pork pie is to have it hot. Thing is, what I'd miss having it hot is the jelly. I like the jelly. Well, that's that. So we're gonna be doing that. We're also gonna be doing an avocado. Now we do eat a lot of avocados, avocados in salad, don't we? Yeah. We normally just slice them up. Well, I'm, I'm pretty apt to just scoop them out and eat them like that sort of thing. I but, like a mashed regard. But you can have them hot, apparently. And also, some people, depending on the size of the avocado, you can cut them in half, just scoop a bit out and put an egg in the centre. We might even try that, but I don't know whether these are going to be big enough for that. I don't that. think that's big enough. Anyway, the next thing is, is... Spam! We all love Spam. We know you can do it in a frying pan, but we've never done it in the air fryer, and we're going to give that a go today. And this is the, probably the most controversial bit, baby. Peeled potatoes, tin potatoes, basically. Are these, Mom, are these, are these new potatoes? Well, we know when we open it, won't we? Well, they're all pretty much the same, aren't they? It just says potatoes in there. Don't say whether they're new potatoes or whatever. Because these are normally very cheap from the supermarket. I don't like them. I find them very salty. Yeah, well, we're going to be draining the fluid off, obviously. So uh, we cut, cut them in a bit of oil, a bit of salt and pepper, and oh. we'll put them just like we do normal spuds. The spice. picture there is of a peeled potato. So it? it is. Right, let's get going, folks. We'll undo these. We'll get things on. And what? no added salt. No added salt. And I've just said they're really salty. She's got that wrong. Yeah. <laughs> See, you ain't read the label, have you, no, baby? No, but I'm thinking when, when I used to get these years ago, I used to put them in with mints and that. Yeah, well, who knows? That's just the cheapest ones we can find, folks. Right, let's get going. Right, so we've just drained them off, folks, and uh, we've actually given them a little rinse off as well. Ugh. Now, they don't, are they new potatoes, Sharon? I'm not sure. They look like new potatoes. But what we've got to do is just to dab all that water off them first, folks, because we're going to be oiling these, obviously, because we're going to try and produce a crust on them, just like a normal roast potato. And if you don't get the water off, water and oil don't mix, so the, the oil won't stick. So we're just gonna sling them into that bowl now. There we go. And Sharon's just gonna get some oil. We're gonna use olive oil. Treat them out with normally treated potato. Yeah, just like, like a normal, potato, just like a normal it. roast potato now. And we're just gonna give them a good coating by literally just giving them a little mix up in there, folks, just to make sure they've all got a bit of oil on them. Season them well. We're using black pepper, cracked pepper. And we use in the, the pink Himalayan rock salt. And we just give them a little stir up as well. There we go. I'm not sure, Sham, whether these are partially cooked anyway. They feel, it. They feel soft. Yeah, so we're going to go in the air fryer and we're just going to drop them in there, leave them in there. We're going to put the uh, crisping tray still in there and we're going to go on air fry at 200 degrees centigrade for 20 minutes and we'll see how that goes. So we will be checking them probably halfway through and then giving them a little shake as well. So that's that one done, that's out of the way. Next one, let's get the pork pie out, baby. This is a classic pork pie from Walls. Uh, we haven't opened it, as I say, both remain open. And don't forget, these are already cooked, but they're already quite thick as well, Sharon. So I'm not quite sure with the density of it, um, how we're going to, uh, how many, t uh, what time we're going to cook this at? And what we probably could do as well is to actually cover it so we don't colour the surface anymore. If we surround it with foil. silver foil, which I think we will do, folks, bear with us, because we're getting a lot of people also saying that when they're cooking something and it's quite high temperatures, like 200 degrees, the top is burning and sometimes the underneath isn't hot enough. So you can't just lay on silver foil on top of something because. It literally will blow away. So what we're gonna probably experiment with is covering something totally like this, for example. Why should we put it that way? Why would you put it over the top so when you open it up? It's dummy, isn't she? I I just, it, if I flip it over then. Go and I'm thinking and talking, Sharon. I'm, 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 I'm busking it on my feet sort of thing like that, you see. 
So right, so that's in foil now, and we're going to put that on, how long did you say, 180? We'll do that for 20 minutes and all, shall we? Because yeah. it's quite a thick pie. And now we've put that on, it shouldn't actually brown it anymore and possibly burn it. So let's whack this in at the same. Come back here, you. Save electric. We'll put the spam in with it as well. Of course we will. Why didn't I think of that, Sharon? Yeah, look. Right, what's it say? Split. Lift the lid and pull, we've done that. Squeeze it until it pops. I think I might And then tap and, and squeeze. So squeeze it until it pops and then just tap and until it falls out. Tap and squeeze, I think it said. Oh, did it? Yeah. Well, that's not as easy as they say, is it? It's not working, spam. Oh, hello. Oh, it's coming, I think. I've really had to squeeze that side, though, yeah? Here it comes. Not the easiest, really, even though the instructions are on the side, folks. There we go. Spam. Spiced pork and ham. Do you know what, what? actually? It could have been better if that had been in the fridge for a little while. Well, no, it's quite firm, yeah? Oh, is it? It is quite firm. Right, let's cut this thinly. Well, not thinly. We get about four or five chunks out of that. So those of you who haven't had Spam before, it's quite nice cold. And uh, we're going to give good thickness slices. Nice and straight, baby. That's lovely. That's perfect. That's what I know as a Spam slice. Spam fritter. 200 grams. So 200 gram tin, you'll get five slices really. And let's whack them in the air fryer. Yeah, we're just putting them straight on top of the crisper tray, folks. Yeah, we're gonna put the pie in as well. Nice one. There we go. Well, they will be getting Yeah, so there we go. So that's going on as well. And we're putting that one on for the same. So that'll go on air fry, which is 200 degrees C. And the time, we want 20 minutes and off, a, off we go as well. Give them a shake while you're learning the check. Yeah, we'll have a look at look at these potatoes. Oh, look at them, look. They're looking all right, aren't they? Give them a shake. I'm going to give them a shake, baby. Right. Okay, let's get this avocado ready. Right, so round the middle, Sharon. Roll it in your hand. All the way round till it meets up with the other crack. And open that up, Sharon. That's it. And all we do then to get the, the core out is just hack the knife in the middle. Mind your fingers and twist and there you go that's how you get the center out of the avocado now this avocado folks really ain't too great to be honest with you it's a little bit brown and possibly a little bit small as well so i don't think we're going to be putting an egg in it but we will put that in the um the other compartment which is the one that's got the roast potatoes in because we are saving energy baby so if we just drop that in there move them over a little bit tip them down to one end and just put that in there as well as I say, this is just a little test for folk, this one, because uh, we've never done this before. So, and let them two now carry on cooking, and we'll come back to you when they're cooked. Right, folks, we've got a few of these out, and I must say, these potatoes look pretty good, shall I? I don't know what they're going to taste like. Let's have a closer look at them. And as you can see, the Spam cooked a treat as well. We took the Spam out early. I think the Spam took about seven or eight minutes. Mm. The potatoes nearly went to the uh, full season, which was about 15, 16, 17 minutes. The avocado, which don't look too good actually, to be honest with you, but uh, the proof is in the taste. It's definitely cooked, it's hot and steaming. Uh, that took about six or seven minutes. We've left the pork pie in now because we've just put the temperature probe in there and the temperature is only reading about 28, 30 degrees. So we've just opened the top up of that foil, which mm. Sharon said, do it that way up, which is a good idea. I didn't think of that, did I, baby? No. And um, we just left that ticking away there for a bit longer. Right, let's have a little taste of this then. Well, here we are, folks. We've, we are babysitting as well, so we're trying to do this in between uh, morning naps and he just woke up, little Frank. So as we were saying, Sharon, we've now got to do a little taste test. So these are the cooked tin potatoes. I don't know, I think they're actually new potatoes. We'll soon find out when we taste them. Right, go on in, baby. Now, what do you think of them? Not for me. You don't like new potatoes? Oh my God, no, I like new potatoes, but I don't like tin potatoes. <laughs> no. <laughs> she no. don't like them, folks, but looking at them, as you can see, they're a... Uh, they have a strange taste. They have got a strange taste. I think it's more of the potato, not the procedure, Sharon. All right, well, let's have a go with this one. I'll break it in half. It has got a crust on it. They look nice. And they are steaming. I don't think you see that, folks. 
So they're definitely cooked all the way through, but let's have a go. The procedure of cooking tin potatoes does actually work. And if we would have left them in for a bit longer, they would have got crusty, even more crustier. But as Sharon says, I don't know whether it's just because they're the cheapest ones we found. There is sort of an aftertaste with them. But it would work if you're on a budget. Yeah, if you're and you on want, a budget. And you wanted some carbs in your diet. Yes, that would definitely work. But right. it's just as cheap to go and buy some potatoes and do it yourself. Of course people. it is, yeah. We, we, we wanted to try it, Sharon. Won't be doing it again. Right. I vowed never to buy them again. Yeah. Get older a bit of that corn, but not what's it called? Get older of that uh, spam. No, take the old bit, baby. Tell me what you think of that. I love it. I love a spam. Is that fruit crusty? Fruit. Mm. You happy with that? Mm. That works in the air fry, folks. We used to fry it, just shallow fry it in a, in, in a frying pan, but that does it qu a lot quicker. Here goes, folks. Oh, oh. Oh, that worked. Crispy on the edges. You might have heard the crunch. Salty, hot. Cooking Spam totally changes the product. If you've ever had Spam cold chow, mm. it's a bit like thickly sliced ham, isn't it? Pro processed ham. But when you have it like this, totally different. And I do recommend trying that, folks. <laughs> I've got to finish it off, yeah. Frank liked it. Frank just tried a bit. I mean, the avocado. Six minutes. Now, I should have coated it with oil, maybe. But people normally put an egg on it or some cheese on top of it. Because it's dried out on the surface. But I'm going to give it a go anyway. No. No? No. Well, look, you're not an avocado eater, really, no, are you? I don't like avocado cold, not like that. Let me have a go. No, Frank. Oh. Oh, I like it, Chow. Yeah? Yeah. It's it melts. Nothing. It melts in the mouth. As you say, with an avocado, you don't get a lot of flavour, but, yeah, it does work well, warm. I can imagine it with an egg in the middle. I can imagine it with cheese on the top, grated as a high protein, high fat meal. So as far as that goes, I do think that the uh, potatoes are a success. They definitely do crisp up in the uh, microwave, although we don't like the flavor of the potatoes. This stuff is a winner, oh, yes. absolute winner. The avocado, take it or leave it. I do prefer avocados cold, but it's just another option. So we're gonna go over to the uh, pie now, let's get it out. So we've had it on for an extra five minutes, folks. Just sitting in the air fryer, opened up. The top has darkened off a little bit, but the temperature shot up in that little space of time up to 53. Now that's okay for this because the meat is actually cooked anyway. So we're gonna take it out now and give it a taste test. And if this was raw meat, you'd be looking for 75 degrees centigrade plus for it to be cooked. And also with raw meat, you wanna be turning it over halfway because you need to turn it over, otherwise the bottom won't cook fully. Right, there they are, folks. That's the hot one, and it is hot, actually. So I'm just gonna cut through the middle of the cooked one, and we'll have a little look inside, folks. And as you can see there, steaming away, and it sort of looks gelatinous as well, which it is quite appealing. It's more like a pie now. And then we'll cut open the uncooked one, which is a lot firmer to cut. Oh, hello. So if I just open them up like that, you'll be able to see exactly what we're looking at there. There we go, folks. So that's the cooked one. It sort of, it comes apart in a way, whereas the cold one is more solid and it's held together a lot more. Right, baby, so I'll cut you a little bit off. I know, you got, I know you're looking after baby Frank now. I'll cut you off a sliver and then you can go in and tell me what you think. This is the hot one, don't forget. A new experience for both of us here. We love it a pork pie. Nice. It does smell nice. Is that something you could eat hot? Yeah. Yeah, right. That's what the northern people, people up north, say that's the only way to eat a pork pie. Let me have a go. Totally new experience, folks. Here we go, I'm going in. 
Mm. Oh, that was. It makes the pastry really nice and crunchy. Oh, I've never tasted anything like it in a pork pie. It brings that pastry to life. And you are eating a savoury pie. Now, normally, with a pork pie, let's cut you a normal bit off of the normal one, shall we? Yeah, do that. With this one, this is the uncooked one, the no well, I say uncooked, I mean, that's the cold one, and we normally have it. Try that, baby. That one is screaming out for mustard, isn't it? Put a little bit of mustard on it, baby. Put a little bit of mustard on yours. There you go. It's just a totally, totally It's a totally different, different thing, it transforms texture. it. It's a totally different texture, that. Yeah. Now, I remember before we done this, tell me what you think of that. Before we done this, she said, no way pork pie's got to be eaten cold. Didn't you? Mm. So let me have a little go as well. We know what a pork pie tastes like and we love it cold as a little snack or whatever. I've been thinking lately, lately. Perfect with a bit of English mustard on folks. And that is what we know as a pork pie. But this thing, do you know what it needs? It needs brown sauce on it folks. It totally changes it, Sharon. Oh yeah. I'm going in again with brown sauce on it this time. I'm going to transform it, look. Sharon, and what it does to the pastry, the cooking, it makes a lovely pastry and the inside dissolves in your mouth, folks. Here we go, look, look. Mm. Oh, that's just superb. That's turned it into something you could have with chips and beans. I would definitely have that with chips and beans, shall I mashed potato? We've tried something different in this air fryer. Things that people say that you shouldn't really cook in an air fryer, but it works out well. And for the North and the South, eating pork pies, do you like that? He likes the Spam. He likes the Spam. Because he can find stuff up. Yes, if you've never tried pork pie hot, do that in there. But as I say, to cook that, it was quite dense, and as soon as I undone the lid after 15 minutes, just opened it up, it started cooking right the way through. And we got this up to about 55 degrees, 56 degrees, and it was hot, don't forget. That's edible eating temperature, but the meat in the middle is already cooked. So if it was raw, you'd need to get that temperature up to 75 degrees centigrade plus. Anyway, there you go, folks. Hope you've enjoyed this little one. We've been doing the cooking with little Frankie boy. Have you enjoyed it, Frank? Frank likes the spam. Of course he shot. does. Anyway, where's his bottle, Shout! I'm going to have a go at his bottle. <laughs> See you later, folks. See you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye, bye.